Hi, I'm Chikudum. Welcome to Stand There For. We've been looking at a lot of stuff regarding what to do after you've done all, required all that you know to do. And yet, the miracle, the expectation, your desires are yet to be fulfilled and yet to come through. What do you now do? Join me on the other side. Hi, welcome back. What do you do when you've done all that you know to do? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, talking about we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and all that. The Bible now says that having done all to stand, we should stand therefore. And he now said, putting on or guarding your leons with truth. We're going to look at that particular um, line, guarding your loins with truth in the fourth episode. This is the second one. So make sure you follow through throughout the episode. But there's something I want to lay as a foundation in this today's episode and that is God's love. Because having done all to stand, stand, he's talking about standing in faith. Standing in faith. There are two Sesman twins that when you have both of them working together, your miracles will cease to be elusive. And that is faith in God, faith in his word, and the second one is patience. So when Paul said, stand therefore, he's talking about have patience. Without love, your faith foundation might not have structural integrity. Love shown in two ways. First, the vertical love, love for God. You need to have a deep revelation of God's love for you. Secondly, love for the brethren. If you have something against someone, the Bible says when you bring your sacrifice, when you bring your request to the altar, leave it. Go and settle with that one that you have something with or you have something against or that one that has something against you. It says settle it before you come to the altar. Very important. But today I want to talk to you about the vertical love, the love of God. The love of God, the love of God. The Bible says that while we are yet sinners, that Christ died for us. The Bible says in John 3 verse 16, one of the most popular scriptures in the entire Bible, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die for you and I. That love is an undying love. That love is an everlasting love. That's the love God has for us. So faith walks through love. When you catch a deep revelation of God's love for you, you will know one thing for sure, that God means what he says and says what he means. You know something for sure, that God seeks your well-being even more than you do. God wants to prosper you even more than you want prosperity. God wants to, God has healed you more than you are asking him to heal you. I mean, God's love knows no bounds. That is the love God has for us. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 that we should let Christ dwell in our hearts through faith. When Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, then we'll come to know what is, what is that love that God has for us that will be rooted, that will be grounded in all the dimensions of God's love for us. He talked about the height, the depth, the width, and all that. Trying to describe God's love in all dimensions, in all three, four dimensions. God's love is universal. God's love is total. God's love is perfect. God's love for us is unusual. So when you have faith in God with the foundation of God's love for us, that faith will be strong. That faith will never fail. You will never fail at all. The Bible says something in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8, that we should put on the breastplate of faith and love. Now, you keep seeing faith and love being put together, being put together, because the love and the revelation of God's love for us gives you unusual faith in God. 
Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13, there are three things, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them all is love. When you develop, when you develop a deep relationship with God, when you develop a deep worship life, something happens in that place. There is an unveiling of God because the word worship is a word that connotes intercourse. No man, no woman has intercourse fully clothed. For you to have intercourse with your lover, you undress. In that place of deep fellowship with God, in that place of deep worship with God, God unveils himself. The Holy Spirit unveils himself and he becomes vulnerable. He becomes open. He shares his heart with you. In that place of deep fellowship and communion with God, he shows you and reveals to you how deep his love is for you. By God's grace, I have a little revelation of that. It's part of my foundation of faith. I know more than I know. I know that I know that God truly loves me. I am rooted in it. I am grounded in it. That is why I don't have an issue with God's promises. I don't have an issue without fear, worry, and anxiety. Because I know the one that owns the universe, the almighty God, loves me. And he can do anything for me. He said, if need be, he will give men's lives for me. Lowly me, little me. But yet, the Almighty loves me. That is the source of unshakable faith. I want you today to go in that deep revelation of God's love. He loves you. I don't care about your past. I don't care about the things you've done. He loves you. Believe that. And I pray for you right now. You that you are wondering when will it be? When will God come through for you? I give you words from God. He is going to come through speedily in the name of Jesus. Amen. See you at the next one.